Hi, this is Maggie. In this video we'll talk about how to calculate x and y coordinates given a starting location and a vector expressed as an angle and a magnitude. Figure 9-5 from your text shows a vector as both an x-y pair and an angle and magnitude. For example, this vector, which we obtained by calculating the distance from 0.53 to 0.139, can be represented as the pair 8, 6, or in polar coordinates as the angle 36.87 degrees 10 units. If we want to move an object according to some angle, or calculate the xy coordinate that is some angle and distance away from some other coordinate, then we must calculate our x and y coordinates using some trigonometry. Let's take our vector and place it on the unit circle so that it extends from the center of the circle to the edge. The vector is then the length of the radius of the circle, and because this is a unit circle, that radius is 1. What I want to know is the xy coordinate of this point on the edge of the circle where the vector finishes. I can create a right triangle with this vector, and the two sides represent the x coordinate and the y-coordinate, as you can see. If we move over along the x-axis on one side and then down the y-axis on the other side, we reach the edge of the circle. Now, if we use the definitions of sine and cosine, we can see how trigonometry gives us the x and y-coordinates of this point. You might have learned that the definition of cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the side adjacent to our angle of 36.87 degrees is the x-coordinate, and the hypotenuse, because this is a unit circle, is 1. Therefore, the x-coordinate is the cosine of 36.87. The sine of our angle is defined as opposite over hypotenuse, and the opposite side is the y-coordinate. So, if we have an angle, we can take its cosine to get the x-coordinate and its sine to get the y-coordinate. These functions are in the math library, so it actually isn't difficult at all to get from an angle to an xy-coordinate, or dx dy, that we can add to keep an object moving in a particular direction that is specified by an angle. The only tricky part of this is that the coordinate system we use in Pi game is flipped from the coordinate system that sine and cosine were defined in. So ordinarily, the top right quadrant is positive x, positive y. But for us, the bottom right quadrant is positive x, positive y. If you map it out, you'll see that our quadrants are flipped over the x-axis. x works as expected but y doesn't. So we'll have to adjust for that in our code. This program is our template, but I've renamed it to anglemotion.py, and I've loaded in a robot image and that I blit to roughly the middle of the screen, and I've set the background to white. Let's annotate and initialize an angle variable to 36.87 degrees and annotate and initialize a speed variable to 5 pixels and process a mouse press by moving our robot 5 pixels at 36.87 degrees. So remember first, we'll need to import the math library. So I'll add that at the top. Then down in our handy template, we'll process a mouse button up event by calculating 
a new location for our robot based on angle and speed. Now it will almost be as simple as robot x plus equals speed times math.cos angle. In other words, we're multiplying the speed by the unit dx we get from taking the cosine of the angle. And then we're adding that displacement to our robot x coordinate. And so similarly, the y coordinate is almost as simple as robot y plus equals speed times math.sign angle. The first catch is that math.cos and math.sign take their arguments in radians, not degrees. That's fortunately easy to solve because the math library also converts angles to radians. So I change angle to math.radians angle in both places. And that problem is solved. So let's run the program. OK. And our robot moves when I click. And he moves along the vector that you saw in our drawing. So what's the problem? Well, it depends on whether you think that's 36.87 degrees or negative 36.87 degrees. Because if you think it's negative 36.87 degrees, then the robot is moving in the wrong direction. So we will need to adjust our angle so that the y coordinates are flipped. So in the y calculation, I pass negative angle to the function to convert to radians. And when I run the program, the robot moves in the correct direction if we're considering this to be the regular Cartesian coordinate system when we specify the angle. If we change the angle and test in all four quadrants, we'll find that the robot moves correctly. OK, so that is how you calculate an xy coordinate or a dx dy displacement from an angle and a speed. I recommend that you practice with this by rewriting this program from your template until you can write it without looking at this code and you know what every line does. You can make the program more interesting by allowing the user to change the angle up or down by pressing keys. When you can do that, you're ready to move on.